Hi, welcome to Car Mechanical. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove your Audi A4 or A6 2.5 litre V6 TDI cat and how to put it back on. And in between, why don't we take out the insides as well? So we're going to make it a D cat. So the first thing I've done there was to take off the three 10 mil bolts on the heat shield. And we're now undoing the 12 or 13 mil nuts on the turbo side of the catalytic converter. So I'm just going to speed that up and get these undone. That bottom one's a little bit tricky. You may have to use a spanner. Depending on the side you were going for, I found my ratcheting spanners or my sockets wouldn't quite fit everywhere, so a lot of it was quite manual. These come off quite easily. The difficult bit is what's going to come next. So I'm going to assume you've got the car up on jack stands at the moment or on ramps. You're going to need it because you're going to need to get underneath the car and you're going to need a combination of extensions on socket sets to get to the back of the cap. So I'm using a Flexibit as at the time it was all I had and I'm using a couple of extensions that I had as well. That was just about enough to get me into the back of the cat. And again, I think they were 12 or 14 mil nuts that I needed to undo. So I'm gonna show you where we're gonna go underneath the car to get to everything and how we're gonna undo everything. I can't quite film everything because it is a bit tricky down there doing this one-handed and filming. But if you come under the car, if you come from behind the gearbox and past the drive shaft, you can see the nuts that you need to undo. So we've got one on top, one on the side, and one around the other side as well. So you're best to crack these off with a spanner and quite a bit of force. And you can either get a ratcheting spanner on there, or you can get your socket set on there. And to be honest, depending where it is, you need to get the socket set and to come from a bit further back. And if you're using two hands, it's a hell of a lot more easy. So this is kind of the setup that I was having to use, and it was just about effective. The flexible socket bit, at times it did seem like it was not gonna have a, it wasn't gonna be able to take the full amount of torque, but it just about did because I'd loosen things off before. So you can ratchet off on there. Now what you're gonna need to do to get access to the bottom one is the drive shaft heat shield gets in the way. So I'm trying to show you that here. So we've got the gearbox, we've got the drive shaft, and just on top there's a heat shield. Now you might make things easier for yourself by taking the heat shield off to start with, however I managed to get the nuts off at let's say the 1 o'clock position and kind of the 5 o'clock position off, but there's one around the other side at the 10 or the 11 o'clock position that I couldn't get off. So we're going to come around in a second and I'm going to show you the heat shield, we're going to come in from the wheel arch, you might want to take the wheel off to do this job as well, you don't necessarily need to but it does give you a bit more space. So that's the heat shield we're looking at, it's held on with 3 allen bolts. And you can use various combinations. I did some with a screwdriver and extension. I did some with a ratchet. Uh, I actually tried to do some with Allen keys, um, but depending on the space, it depended on how much that you had to work with. So I'm just going to try and share different methods that I tried here. Once you get this out of the way, it does free up a lot more of the space to get that cat off. So the one on top is very difficult. The ones down the side are quite easy and you can actually just use your sockets on those and then take the rest off by hand. Also, please excuse the oil leaks you're seeing on my engine. My car's got nearly 200,000 miles on it. It might need certain bits and pieces to do and most of which probably involve taking lots of bits off. Now with the heat shield off, I just wanted to show you what kind of poor access you have to the part on top. And this is where the extensions came in handy for me. Just because if you couldn't get up there where it's blind to see with a socket, you might be able to do it with a wobble bit but I just wanted to show that. So now everything's undone on the cat, we've got the heat shield out and I've taken the last part off of camera. We're gonna take the cat off, so you might need to pry it off and you may need to work it a little bit just to free it up on the bottom connections, on the bottom bolts, and you're gonna pull that up. Now take care to get hold of the gaskets and not to drop them down if you're looking to reuse them. Ideally you should replace the gaskets, I didn't. Uh, I'm open to criticism on that if you want, but they sealed back up fine for me. So I do go back in there and fish the gasket out. And this is the original cat. So a bit of a rare opportunity. Let's start the car with absolutely no exhaust and see what it sounds like. And that's why I got a V6 TDI. And it's also why I said to watch out for the gasket. So let's carry on with the decat then. So this is the cat in all its glory. And for some reason there's spats of weld all over it. Maybe it's been repaired at some point. Maybe it's from the factory, who knows. But as you look into the cat, it's completely pitch black. 
that's the cat material doing its job and by the way if you are planning to decat it for whatever reason let's just say it's for racetrack use and not for road use um, this video here is for an example however by getting rid of the cat so this is the pre-cat the TDI has three of them you can free up the turbo a bit to spool a bit quicker so I'm going to use a few methods to get the cat out and most of them involve hitting it with something and just sort of poking out the material inside. We don't want to hit it too hard with anything too sharp because we don't want to go through the material itself of the metal of the cat, but we do want to smash up the insides. So I'm using the broom handle and a hammer and we're just going to smash it all up inside and basically just going to rinse and repeat until all of that material is broken up and you can pour it away and you've effectively made yourself a decap pipe. By the way, some of this stuff can be quite nasty in there, so make sure you are wearing a mask ideally. I think I should be wearing a mask, but for some reason at some points I may have taken it off in a video, but ideally when you're doing stuff like this you want to be using eye protection and sort of breathing protection because you don't want to get anything in your eyes or breathing it in. So I've sped all of that up. There's quite a bit of work to smash it all of it up and I use a bit of a screwdriver to pinpoint some of the more stubborn bits. However, we've got that all done and we now have a decatted pipe once I've poked out the last little bits. So once that's done, we're going to investigate it in the sun, you'll be able to see all the way through and we can put it back onto the car and that's exactly the reverse of what we did before. There you go, we can see light coming all the way through now. Might be an idea to quickly go over the edges with a white brush as well. Also for the threads, it will just make it easier to do everything back up, you make it less work for yourself. So remember I said you should probably get new gaskets. Uh, metal ones can be reusable. I'm reusing them, I've not had any issues with it. Um, I've not had any issues with any sort of official tests or anything after that either. So I'm going to pop the bottom one on first to make sure the gasket lines up, unlike where it hasn't there for me, it's dropped off. So I'm going to put it back on and then we're going to just snug it up on the top and we're going to go underneath and we're going to do those bolts up again. So you can see there I've got it back in place now. And then from the underside we're going to do it up. So I'm going to snug it up with the extendable ratchets again. Now this time it's easier because I've taken the drive shaft shield off give himself a little bit more access and we're going to put it back on and just a reminder again about the kind of access you have you can use a socket set but you need to use your extensions on it and I believe that they are 6mm I don't think they're 7mm so again I'm just going to sort of show you putting the shield back on so you can align all of this up and it's much easier with two hands rather than one trying to film but again this is just to give some context of what you're doing whilst you're underneath the car and obviously the higher you get the car and safely jack it up the more access you give yourself to move your arms around as well so some decent height and jack stands do help and as I mentioned yep I need to deal with the oil leak uh, it's not too bad in terms of the car running it's just a little bit messy and I actually don't get too much dripping on the drive so we're going to snug up that side of the heat shield we're going to snug up the other side of the heat shield and I think I quickly do just go in with the socket set so now that's all done up underneath, we can do the final positioning of getting the turbo in place. I wanted a bit of place to be able to move things about underneath if we needed to. So we're going to do these nuts back up. And we're going to give them tight and a quarter. Um, I've not got any torque specs as such, but sort of tight enough so they're nice and not going to come undone, but also so they're not ridiculous. Before we put the heat shield on, I want to start the car. I just want to make sure I don't see any visible leaks from the cat itself. I don't want to see anything coming out causing any boost leaks, causing any potential uh, exhaust into the cabin leaks through the pollen filter. And then we're going to put the heat shield back on and that's it. Uh, the decap process is really, really simple for the pre-cap. For the other two caps, there's a bit more involved. Uh, when I get around to that, I will cover that, but that basically involves removing the whole exhaust and going around a process to remove the cats whilst leaving the cats in place that will make more sense down the line and that's it for this video so i hope you guys have enjoyed that please leave any comments or feedback in the section down below if you'd like to see more videos like this please subscribe to the channel and more than anything thank you for watching